What up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some Jujutsu Kaisen. Today we're doing season two, episode 19. As you can see, I'm fitting it thematically. I don't want to be caressing myself on video, pause, but I'm equally excited, equally nervous, especially after last episode for this episode. We are watching this live on Twitch right now. So if you guys want these vibes, the insane hypeness that is over here, come on over to the Twitch. Links are always down below for that. Um, I do have some Q&As in the Discord. If you guys ever want to ask me something that I answered before the episode comes out, check out that Discord. The Q&A section is always there. Let's hop right into these questions. So our first question comes from Quagmire. Thank you always for asking the questions, my man. He says, who do you think is the weakest among Tokyo Jujutsu High students? Also, if an anime is showing a flashback of a character, if an anime is showing a flashback of a character, do you think that is powers a power up for that character or just a death flag? It's a great question. It's a great question, Quagmire. In terms of the weakest amongst the Jujutsu High students, it saddens me to say, because I think I love her personality, almost one of the best, but I would, and I, I love her, and she's the motivation for Mekamaru. I love him, but I gotta say, Miwa is probably the weakest. Miwa or Mai? But, like, I'm not saying that in, like, an insultive way. They both could absolutely be very strong and, and have some moments, especially with a simple domain, anything Miwa can do. But my initial guess would have to be Miwa, sadly, even though I love her. And if an anime is showing a flashback of a character, do I think it's power up or a death flag? It is definitely situational and contextual based. Like in this scenario, if they showed a Nobara flashback, I would sadly think it's a death flag. But <sighs> that's because we're in Shibuya. If they show a Yuji flat, like it's very contextual. I just, that's a great question, honestly, because it's, it's, it's a solid 50-50. If we're watching One Piece, Mainly, I would say power up because I do the backstories to then introduce you to the character and really start to get you to to start attaching to these characters. But in this one, they get you to attach them just to rip it away. The great question, I would say uh, probably death in this arc. All right. This next question is from Merc. They ask, which character from JJK would you want to just sit down and have a conversation? And which one would you want to stay away from? Now, this might be a hot take. This might be controversial. But who I, I just thought who I'd want to stay away from immediately. It, actually, I could win him over. I was thinking it would be bad, but I might be able to win him over. I was going to say Toto immediately just because he's amazing. He's one of the best characters in the show. But in terms of actual reasoning and rationality, man is off the hinges. You know, if I say I don't like tall women with big asses, it's going to be the last you guys see of me. You know what I'm saying? So theoretically, I might stay away from Toto, even though I love him so much. But who would I actually sit down and have a conversation with? It would have to be someone open-minded, yet somewhat insightful, yet still cool. Honestly, it would probably be Toji or Ghetto post. Like Ghetto during Zero or Toji post death, like if he came back and was resurrected. Because I would want to get like an unfiltered opinion on everything. Like Ghetto beforehand might filter his opinions. Ghetto during Zero is going to let you know exactly what he thinks. Toji afterwards is going to let you know exactly what he thinks so i feel like if i could just have a straight heart to heart conversation it would probably be ghetto or toji it's a great question too merc thank you next question comes from Zeno, absolute legend and a mod now shout out Zeno. he says do you think jjk's handling of an event battle and that loses and that losses for the hero and villains are similar is something preferable to normal anime which while one or two heroes may die at best the villains are almost totally wiped out with nothing but wounds in the end for the good guys and a fun recovery arc. Some people are very adverse to JJK because it's abuse of the cast, but I'm curious how you feel about the dark overtones. Are they refreshing or excessive? Sorry for the long question. Absolutely fantastic question, first off. Um, I am one of those, I guess, hot taker weirdos. I don't necessarily call it abuse to the cast, even though theoretically it is. I like that because even though anime is supposed to be fantasy, it's not supposed to be realistic in any sort of the sense. I do like that realistic expectations that was set into me from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, its main job is to bastardize what you think of chivalry, honor, fighting, Prince Charming, a lot of these old fantasy elements that we that we hype up and we think are these beautiful white knight moments is supposed to be really dark, gritty, gruesome, and not fair at all. That's how life sadly is. And so do I think these event battles in which it's way more even on good and bad because theoretically it doesn't matter how good of a person you are in real life mother nature earth the fates they don't give a 
I mean, like, we can have that debate karmically, whatever you guys want to say. They don't give a fuck, you know? So that's that's a great question. Honestly, it's a great question. I prefer the more realistic approach, you know, like everyone's going to get fucked either way. So it's a great question. All right, last question comes from Simlin. Thank you guys for the amazing questions, by the way. Now that Gojo is sealed and the power gap is so huge amongst the curses and sorcerers, how are they going to deal with curses in your opinions? Can sorcerers level up? Also a great question. I relate that so much to other shows or pieces of media where they have one hero that is the end all be all savior of everything. It does drastically lower the bar for everyone else because you have that end of the day reliability on someone, whether it's All Might, whether it's Superman, whether it's Gojo. I do think there needs to be instances like they did this perfectly where he's sealed and he can't do anything, but there needs to be instances in which we you can't just rely on Gojo, you know, like it's very it's a it's a very good question. I don't know how we deal with these curses to answer your question, but I do think we need to stop the complacency and we do need to level up as sorcerers in, in general. I do think that's that's the truth, the hard truth of it, sadly. Teamwork is a great, great response to that as well. Team, especially in JJ, they'd be jumping people. They, you know what I'm saying? They don't care. Great questions, guys. Thank you so much. Perfect timing. It is 10 o'clock on the dot. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's hop right into today's episodes. Remember to check out that Patreon if you guys want early access, full length, all that jazz. Check out the social medias, TikTok, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all of Dapper Darius. Much appreciated. Hop right into today's episodes. All right. Shoto, Bunkamura Street, outside the veil. I love how they have to specify that. Still got some veils going on. So this is immediately after Nanami saved them. Nita is saying, don't go. Ooh. I'm loving this visually, though. Oh, I love how they visualize the veil and how she walked into a dead Shibuya. Oh, my God. I, that was unnecessary, but thank you for that. Like, the blood is a distraction in your eyes. Ooh, that cut from the nail dropping. Because we do have the Mahito clones. Nobara's got her own to deal with. Shout out, Nobara. Also, huge shout out to everyone in the comments who was letting me know how much of a mirror Mahito was last episode with his yelling back at Yuji, talking back to Nobara, all that. Oh, crazy girl. Yeah, she never fought you, but she does know. Do not let him touch you. Okay, I wanted to know, is he weaker because he's a clone? That's good to know. I did not know that. Okay. So it's unfortunate she's playing defensively because he doesn't... Damn, he's still OP. Just transfiguring herself is still broken. Ooh. That animation looked insane. I love when she does hairpin. All those nails on the ground. Yep. Double extension on them. Bro, is Nobara gonna win? Ooh. Because it does go to what we're connected with! Oh my god, I didn't see anything of uh, Kechizo and the brothers. That was fucking... Shout out Nobara. With the music? Bro. <laughs> I got goosebumps right now. And she could tell. She's... Come on. The deductions. The deductions. This is my woman right here. Put the fucking like guitar playing in the background. Oh! Bro, when I catch you, Mahito. When I catch you, Mahito. This is so cathartic. Thank you, Nobara. Oh my god. Bro, beat his ass. Thank you. We are not alone in this cruel, forsaken world. Oh 
When I catch you, Mahito. Hell. The music in the background is so perfect. I will, I love that about Mahito's personality. He has no pride. He doesn't care about ego or anything. Like he's willing to run away immediately. She needs to go on the offensive, but I'm worried that he's bringing you into a ploy, into a trap. Are we gonna get like a Nobara Yuji team up? I would actually be insanely down. Oh, that was insanely creative. He's purely defensively now. That's so creative because he can go in six opposite directions. Not that one. And then he imbued that one with a little extra curse energy to make him think that's the one with the soul fragment. Bro, Mahito never ceases to amaze me. Yup. They're reabsorbing. We are going to get a team up. Oh, I love the shot. Oh, whoa. They didn't even reabsorb. They just switched. He's going to see Nobara. Because he's the one that can touch. No. Oh, my. I swear to God. Do not cut me to a flashback right now. Do not cut me to a flashback right now. As she's playing Smash Bros, she just got spiked. Don't do this to me. I swear to God, Gege. She's going to get a power up. Nope. Mm -mm. They're gonna subvert, subvert my expectations. I don't believe it. I refuse. We're definitely in the countryside. You were the only one with blue? What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna I, I <laughs> doubt it was necessarily everyone hated blue. Everyone was just picking on the new girl, I'd have to assume. If they use that as their actual vitriol excuse, like, we just don't like blue, fuck you, I would... I would be shocked. Like, if she could fall, she's gonna hurt herself. The backpack could land on her. There's so many scenarios in which you can hurt yourself like this. Thank you, Nobara. That has to be her. Anytime I watch any anime that takes place in school, and someone stands up for somebody getting picked on, I always, I always respect it. This reminds me when we got the Megumi kind of flashback and he was the school bully beating up kids, you know? It's like, I never would have expected this. So is that her and then her older brother? Oh, her dad. Her dad's a gamer? At Ariel's? <laughs> yeah, you'd think, but no. Yeah, like everybody knowing everything about you can be so horrible. You make one little slip up, you do something, everyone hates you. Your well, essentially life is ruined. Like that's weird. I know you're not like no. I'm you're a weirdo. I need to go back in season one. It's like episode, it's early on. It's like episode three or four when we get the first part of Nobara's flashback. See? I'm trying to remember because I know another girl moved in, but then was driven out because she was like Sayori. Was that not her? She was, she was like a city girl. She was driven out by the country folk and that pissed Nobara off insanely. She's got macarons. I've never had one. She seems very nice. Yeah, that is more indication, yeah. Sayori feels like a big, big sister to them, to these two. Yeah, I like how we're getting this from the perspective of a little kid. So she doesn't fully understand what's going on, you know? She just portrays the emotion she's feeling. It starts to feel unsettling. She doesn't know why these things are happening to this nice lady. Not too much longer after that, she le she she left. She moved out. That is incredibly sad. All you remember is Nobara crying. 
Like I said, Sayori gave like big sister vibes, especially with how Fumi was describing Nobara settling down, calming, you know. So Fumi is theoretically still in this village. It's very interesting. We're getting this from Nobara's best friend's POV. That does get deep for sure. There's a lot of emotional depth going on here, you know? Nobara's trying to hold it in. Oh, They give us such... Such little teases of Nobara, Megumi, and Yuji's life. It's so crazy to think about. Oh, this is Sayori. So she's back in the city. Working in her cubicle. Probably hating life. I wonder if she thinks of Nobara or Fumi at all. Again, like big sister vibes. It's, it is nice that she's thinking of them, you know, but I'm nervous about where this is going to take us. This is very emotionally. See, I don't like how they're using that as like that was beautifully done. How it ending is ending with Sayori saying, "I wonder how Nobara is doing after all these years." You know. Now that's true. Now that's facts. Oh, as she uncovers her eye and sees the three, the rest of everyone else who's had a, such a positive influence on her life. Bro, if Nobara dies right now, I swear to God, I'll lose it. And Fumi as well. Hmm. Bro, I swear, no, I don't do this to me. I swear to God. I'm trying to put it into words how I feel. It's very, very difficult. Especially because I went into this episode expecting this, especially after last week's episode. But then I thought, oh, wait, no bar is going off. Mahito's running. Gaga is going to throw me a curveball. Finally subvert our expectations in a good way. Only to then... What? I just... I really... I don't know what to say. All I know... Damn, bro. That was such a well-done flashback for Fumi. How it cut... How it... How it links to Sayori from the first flashback. And how it links to everything. To everyone she's met. To her right now. I was just like, bro... First saying tell everyone uh, was she I wasn't a bad life oh like it sounds so weird to say but can I get a break can you give me one episode where I don't have to worry about my beloved people biting the dust like can I... I was so happy Mahito was getting them fucking one two combos this episode it's not even funny bro Oh, I really, I genuinely don't know what to say. The beginning of that episode was so cathartic. Nobara using her deductions, Yuji having the the resonance, and Yuji, I was so happy, and it all just got taken from me. 
it literally felt like I won the lot, like I was winning money, and like you're at the casino and you're winning, and then Gay Gay comes in, whoop! Like it's like, bro, like, this doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Overall, I need to process what's gonna happen. I need to. I can't even grieve because, yeah. It's not, it's, it's going to be like four hours later until it hits me. And we're like, like it hit me like three days after, after anatomy. I was like, man, like next season, we're not going to have that dude anymore. And it like hit me. Like, I was like, I was fucking bummed out at fucking for a little bit there, but I don't know. Great, great episode. Fant is it a great episode though? Is it, is it? I don't know. Fant I don't know. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out that Patreon for the full length. Other than that, like. <sighs> do I need to cover? Can I do I burn this shirt now? Do I throw this away? Like, like do I have not have any characters I love anymore? Like, what the fuck. All right, have a good day, Dapper Squad. I guess. I guess. <laughs>